Hey Kat, which shoes have worked best for me during my recent marathon training block? Let's figure it out. Thanks for tuning in people, it's always appreciated. Help Edbud Running Shoe Reviews to continue to grow by hitting that subscribe button and clicking the bell below for notifications. Also give this video a thumbs up like and share it with your running buddies. You know it makes sense. In my recent marathon training block I've been using loads of different shoes in the rotation. Which ones worked best and which ones am I going to cull and put to the side? There's certain shoes that you just reach for time and time again and there's a few that are going to remain in my shoe rotation as I get to towards the Bristol Half Marathon in May. There's even a couple of shoes I kind of bought out of retirement, I suppose, and continue to use them, though one's gonna now be resigned to the bin. Let's recover the retired shoes first. Sadly, the Alphafly Next% 2 is going to be going into the bin. It's got a bit of a problem. It did work superbly well on some longer sessions where I injected a bit of speed into things. Really good, in fact, at my marathon target pace with a few recoveries. It's taken a serious pounding now. It really is quite disgusting, the shoe. I think I'm up to about 130 miles or so, but sadly, there's a bit of an odd noise coming from the right shoe. It's like this clicking sort of sound whenever I push off. I think something's broken broken there something's shifted around seems to be in the midfoot area i don't know perhaps if one of the pods has got damaged or something maybe it's something to do with the carbon plate either way i'm going to sadly have to call time on the alpha fly next percent too i don't think i'm going to bother to pick up another pair just to get the shoe workable for me once again after about 40 50 miles i had to put another insole in the arch area was just really painful at some point and yeah i'm not really keen to spend another 270 earth credits on another pair of something that i just need to rip apart that noise was just driving me insane as well on a longer run so it's time to say goodbye to the alpha fly next percent too Another shoe that I did use extensively for some speed training during my marathon training block is the Adios Pro 2 in this Berlin colorway. It's a great looking shoe but I have detected a slight issue. Hopefully you can see that there's a small hole developed right on the sort of ball of your foot or your big toe in the left shoe there and it has sadly gotten worse over time. I think at some point it is going to actually break through. It's going to be a big hole. This shoe as well has just got loads of bad memories for me so I think I'm going to put it to rest and put it to pasture. It's it's a goner. So onto some of the top shoes then, which ones have been working really well for me. Just reached 100 miles and you will get my full review on the Nike Zumax Invincible Run 3. The forgiving properties of that shoe have really enabled me to get out there when I perhaps didn't really want to, I suppose, on numerous occasions. Perhaps when you just feel really worn down and you need a little kick out the door. The foam element there is a slab really. So it's more stable with the added fabric piece that they placed into this version of the shoe. Durability, I have to say, has been pretty decent and the outsoles held up well over time. Really good multi-terrain grip and traction from the Invincible Run 3. It's a shoe that's certainly been reliable for me on easy efforts. Recovery is pretty good as well, though I'd suggest it's probably not my shoe of choice for the longer runs, certainly not for anything resembling speed sessions. I think steady to easy pace only on that one, between the 8.30 per mile to 8 minutes per mile. It's more of the same really from the V1 and V2, and I can heartily recommend it for the weary legged. There's several times I had to clock in some longer work hours and it enabled me to get out when I've been on my feet pretty much all day. Just getting in those evening three mile sessions sometimes, just enough to clear the mind and keep the legs moving. Now you could say the cost is up there with that shoe, it's like about 165 is it, something like that? But I find it's pretty much the best in category right now. The Puma Deviate Nitro Elite 2 has been one valuable and versatile shoe to be using over the last few months. It just works so well over a multitude of different run types for me. Fantastic on longer runs, up to around 15 miles at steady pace, throwing in a few faster intervals and reps with this shoe and it just really works. It's not the most rigid but I'm finding it's the best overall really due to the fact it's just so versatile you can reach for it and utilize it pretty much on a daily basis the light nature of that upper and improved fit over the v1 left the legs feeling good and also protected too by that piba based nitro infused foam the traction too on the country roads and paths is unmatched in terms of durability this shoe can remain part of the rotation no problem at all it's like a jack of all trades i suppose 
shoe that can be probably used for racing and training without too many worries just without the fear of bottoming the shoe out really if you think about the alpha fly right that's really not taken well to being used in a training environment kind of costly mistake i suppose that one i think for my lighter frame and weight the dv8 nitro elite 2 is spot on one shoe that i will absolutely not be retiring and a shoe that i will be continuing to use over the coming months is the adidas primex strung i actually bought it out of retirement during the last training block and have continued to use it and it just gets better a superb stable ride despite that extreme stack height and do consider as well there's loads of existing mileage on the shoe the foam just seems to be so resilient it just carries on doing what it does best the light strike pro midsoles hold up really well and it feels even better now perhaps after a load of different 17 plus mile long runs can certainly heartily recommend it for that purpose it really does save the legs if you're getting lots of those longer efforts in this one will just keep you coming back for more and it also provides a really exhilarating feel if you really push it as well i remember running some sub six minute per mile reps in this one and it just feels like you're flying through the air kind of belies the weight of the shoe really i think this one was about just under 300 grams in my UK 11. Yes, it does take a little while to get used to this one and I would not recommend it if you're running on uneven surfaces or strange camber. Just got to keep an eye out for potholes in the road. Thank goodness I wasn't wearing it in Brighton when I came a cropper stepping in one of those. I'm a pretty tall runner, six foot three inches and apparently 72 kilograms as measured on Mrs. Edbud's new scales. I find the shoe to be really light and ideal really for long range training. Nothing matches it for impact protection, but also propulsion. So it is a shoe that I'm gonna leave in the rotation for the foreseeable future. Another one here that I've been loving in terms of my shoe rotation recently, the Forever Run Nitro from Puma. My word, it's incredibly bright, this shoe. Everything else just seems to pale in comparison. I've got to be honest, I love the nitro softness here underfoot. You've got two different formulas of nitro, as confirmed by my good buddy Todd Falker at Puma. Now, it does things that no other shoe does for me. The core section of the nitro here works so well, it really does fit into that sort of long, slow, a steady run category and it's that bit lighter as well than the nike invincible run 3 grip is proving to be just as good as the nike shoe i'd say it's cushioned here and forgiving but without being overtly squashy doesn't feel like you're sinking into quicksand getting some half marathon length longer runs in in the forever run nitro was just easy well it wasn't easy you know it was you still have to put effort in but it certainly kept the legs fresh for some faster sessions later in the week Fans of a more refined underfoot feel will no doubt enjoy the Forever Run Nitro. It's not a shoe really for your high speed work. There's loads of other stuff to do that. I'm just finding the all round package something that you can really get some mileage out of. Also casually as well. I mean, you've got to get your sock and trouser game on if you're going to model the uh, orange version here. Perhaps pick up the black one. That's possibly a little bit more versatile. But if you want something that's going to guide you along, perhaps you need something with a hint of stability, then this is the one for you. So lots of things in the rotation for some sort of slower, steady efforts, but what about the faster stuff, Ed? Definitely staying in for training and the racing is going to be the Vaporfly Next% 3. I'm enjoying this shoe now a little more that it's sort of broken in. I found it a touch firmer than previous iterations out of the box, but it's really hitting the spot now. 40 miles or so and it's softened up a bit. I have an experience experimenting switching the laces out i do have the original ones in here right now i did try a run with some more traditional laces and it did feel a lot better so i think i'm probably going to move forward with the shoe with those other laces that's something actually that i've done with previous versions of the vaporfly next percent to great success and you can't beat it weight wise really it is one of the lightest race shoes out there by some margin actually i'm a bit worried about the durability of that one and it's probably gonna only hold up for like the current block and then it'll probably lose its magic but one shoe i have in reserve ready for when that happens is that hoka rocket x2 
This one really works for me. Some hokers haven't in the past, but this one is hitting the spot. I think in your shoe rotation, you want a bit of versatility, and certainly this one's providing me with that. There's a little less drop in this shoe from heel to toe. Doesn't feel quite as aggressive as the Vaporfly, but the fit of this one is on point in terms of my foot. I'm really enjoying the fact as well that Hoka have placed some rubber in here that's going to extend the shelf life of the shoe. Just think we're going to get a few more miles out of this one with that slightly improved improved and enhanced rubber position. Really looking forward to getting some more faster reps into this one and also doing some work over the half marathon distance. Maybe it's even a shoe I could use for some racing down the line. So that is the shoe rotation as we move forward over the next few months. There's a whole load of different races got coming up. Bristol Half Marathon, the Martok 10K and a little surprise for you a little later in the year. I think with the shoe rotation, you want some versatility there, some shoes that you can do all sorts of different sessions in. Also, you want some shoes that are going to fit with how you feel as a runner on that given day. Let me know your successful shoe rotations down in the comments. What have you been using in your recent training blocks, getting ready for specific races? Quite a few of the viewers have been asking me when my review of the Magnify Nitro 2 from Puma will be coming up. I can confirm it will appear over the next couple of days. Just putting the finishing touches to the video. A lovely max cushioned cruiser here with a full length Nitro midsole. Perhaps ideal for those longer efforts and I do see it as a bit of a competitor to the 1080 from New Balance. But without the excessive bulk. Wicked outsole here too. That's a big improvement over the V1. My full review coming very soon musical interlude time right i get very excited about this band the lemon twigs i've talked about them before on the musical interlude their song i want to prove to you though is one of the best songs i've heard in a long long time there's a great version of this from some american saturday night tv they did like a live version of it and it sounds absolutely fantastic they got some strings in there some actual real people playing them vocal performances out of this world and it just feels like one of those old time sort of songs lovely chord progressions and it just builds up and builds up to this huge crescendo at the end and you undoubtedly will have a smile on your face if you haven't then i just don't think you particularly like music that much and you should perhaps you know go back to some ai generated stuff you know they should be a band on everybody's lips right now but for some reason they're not go and check it out guys i want to prove to you by the lemon twigs thanks for tuning in everybody it's always appreciated hit us up with a super thanks if you've got a particular question you want to get straight to the mind of ed bud hit that subscribe button and the bell below for notifications give this video a thumbs up like and share it with your running buddies my name's ed bud and i'll be seeing you